If he's so proud of how he's divided people, if he's so proud of how he's forcing Canadians to choose between eat, heating and eating, why won't he have the guts to stand up and say so now? Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. We're back in question period today, where allegedly Pierre had some words for Justin about his failure to stand up and answer his questions. Let's get into it. Let have the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> when the Prime Minister flip-flopped and put a pause on his carbon tax for home heating, that didn't do anything to help Quebec. Quebecers are going to have to pay the second carbon tax, which is going to increase not only the cost of gas, but also the cost of groceries. And why? Why is the Prime Minister increasing taxes on Quebecers? Well, it's to fund a billion dollar fund that uh, a senior official uh, put in place as uh, and has called uh, a second sponsorship scandal. Why is the Prime Minister forcing Quebecers to pay for another Liberal scandal? So we've had some questions in the comments upon this. Um, I just want to let everybody know that this is something that we are researching at the moment, but it's going to take us a few days to pull everything together. Um, so stay tuned. We'll probably do an individual video on that, but this is just another scandal in the long list. And, um, honestly, there, there's so many, there's so many threads that are just unraveling from this government and so much corruption that just is pouring out of every hole in this government that it, it's really tough to stay on top of. I thought you were joking when you said we'd have to have a top 100 by the time he's out of office. And uh, at this rate, you might be right. Yeah, it's just insane the amount of corruption that's being exposed right now. So um, the question is, is how long are they going to be able to hold on? The Honorable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have a short question for the Conservative leader. What is the Conservatives' plan to protect the environment? The answer is very simple, no plan. No plan, no solutions. A real solution would be to put in place a plan to fight climate change for the future. A real solution would be to protect our environment for future generations. The Conservative leader must know that Canadians uh, don't have a short memory, Mr. Speaker. They'll remember that uh, what the Conservatives did when they were in power. Chop, 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 Mr. Speaker. They won't take the risk. <laughs> Like, that's it? That's what you got? Um, yeah, they're going to chop taxes. <laughs> that's what they're going to chop. That's right. And they're going to chop, hopefully, the waste that is pre prevalent in all of the government. They hired 30% more public servants. They but, gave, what was it, $14 million to Dalian or Cordex or one of them for doing absolutely nothing? Yeah, total spent on the arrive can, $54 million. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of opportunity to cut from this wasteful government spending. And never mind all of the billions that are given to the municipalities to do absolutely nothing except slow down housing construction, apparently. The Honorable Leader of the Official Opposition. The Prime Minister promised that Wednesdays would be Prime Minister's question period. His public itinerary indicates he's in Ottawa and he was even spotted in the building. So the question is for the Prime Minister about the carbon tax chaos he has unleashed. He has paused the tax on some heat for some people leading the government of Alberta to threaten a lawsuit, the government of Saskatchewan to threaten not to collect the tax, NDP provincial parties in the West even turning against it, and some First Nations saying the entire thing is illegal. Will he reverse all of this chaos and just axe the tax? So there is a law or a rule within the House of Commons that you are not allowed to reference somebody that is 
not in the building in terms of commenting on the fact that they're not there. So if Pierre had said, well, Justin Trudeau isn't even here to answer my questions, he's not allowed to do that. What he is allowed to do is he's allowed to say what the prime minister promised. He's allowed to say what the prime minister's itinerary said, and he's allowed to say where he saw him that day. He didn't comment at all whether or not Justin Trudeau was in the building. So, is he in the building? Before I uh, have the Honourable Minister answer the question, I just want to remind all members it's important not to do uh, indirectly what you can't do directly. As the, the, the Honourable, the Honourable, uh, the Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, let's actually bring the temperature down and talk about exactly what we've done here. We've accelerated the replacement of home heating oil for heat pumps. Mr. Speaker, it's a national program, and if the Premier of Alberta and the Premier of Saskatchewan want to make sure that people who heat their homes with oil in those provinces have access to the same heat pumps, you know what they can do, Mr. Speaker. They can join three Atlantic provinces and BC and sign up for a plan and help low-income people in their province. Will they do it? Time will tell. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. And this is what I hate. Again, these Liberals are conflating two very different things. They're conflating the heat pump program, which gives families at or below the medium income up to $10,000 to replace their oil heating with a heat pump, which... You guys know how we feel about that. We're not going to get into it again. And they're also conflating it with the tax being removed on home heating oil. So they're trying to say like, oh no, what we did in Atlantic Canada, everybody can have that. And they're talking about two completely different things. And if you ask me, they're doing it on purpose to confuse Canadians who are listening. They're absolutely doing it on purpose. The the free heat pump, quote unquote, free heat pump program is only available to three provinces in Canada. And they're saying, oh, the rest can sign up for it. Sure, they can sign up for it. Well, Fine. Well, Canadians can't sign up for it. The MPs, and sorry, the premiers have to come forward and say that they want to participate in that. Right. And they're trying to put pressure on the premiers for that. But what most people are talking about in terms of the carbon tax cutout is the fact that home heating oil is not being taxed in the Atlantic provinces. They're trying to conflate that with this heat pump purchase program. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And, you know, it's been pointed out that there's a bunch of people in Northern Ontario, in Nunavut, in Yellow Knight, or sorry, in Yukon, in Northwest Territories, all of the Northern provinces and territories there's going to be people that use oil up there because you're not going to be using electricity. You're not going to be using natural gas. So there's not a lot of options left. And you're certainly not going to be using heat pumps because it's too cold. And what about the rest of us across the rest of the country that use alternate methods to heat our homes, such as natural gas or wood burning or, or, or what have you? Well, and that's the silly thing. So what, what are you expecting here, Trudeau, that people that have natural gas stop using natural gas and they spend like tens of thousands of dollars on an electric furnace? Is is that really, really what you're suggesting? Well, that's the problem. They didn't think about this before they announced it. All they saw was, oh my goodness, we're down in the poles in the Atlantic provinces. What are we going to do? Oh, well, you know, everybody out there is concerned about the carbon tax. Why don't we give them a break? That's exactly how it went. They're trying to buy votes by telling Atlantic Canadians that if you guys vote liberal again in the next election, we're going to slap the carbon tax right back on. How does that make sense? Well, and it's completely opposite of the original messaging of the carbon tax, if you remember. You know, they keep saying, well, this this is putting a price on pollution and it's to curb people from polluting. Okay, so therefore what you should have done in line with that is taken the tax off of everyone who is not using an oil furnace to actually heat their homes and only keep the tax on the oil furnace people giving them the option of going through this quote-unquote heat pump. But you didn't do that. You did the opposite of that. And that's because you're trying to buy votes, as Fox said. Mr. Speaker, the question was for the Prime Minister. Yeah, right. He has unleashed carbon tax 
chaos across the country. After saying he would never bend, he backed down because I kept beating him in these debates in the House of Commons. And he put a two-year pause on some heating oil for some people, causing Saskatchewan to threaten not to collect the tax, Alberta to threaten a lawsuit, six provinces coming out against the plan, First Nations saying it's illegal. If he's so proud of himself and what he's done, then why won't he stand up now and defend it? Yeah. I know why. I know why he won't stand up and defend it. Because Be it makes no sense. It's indefensible. Because he didn't come to question period. That's that too. why. That too. So he's in Ottawa. He's around Parliament. He's just ducking question period because this has become a disaster. As we said last week that it would, it has become a complete shambles for the Liberal Party. And they are not going to be able to make this go away. I'm sorry, but they're not. And this is our Prime Minister, folks. Instead of being a real man and standing up and admitting when he's wrong and, and dealing with the blowback, he runs and hides. Yeah, and lets other ministers take the flack for him. What kind of a leader is that? Again, I ask uh, all members, uh, please, if you do not have uh, the floor, to refrain uh, from speaking. Uh, so that we can hear the question and we can hear the answer. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition seems to be too busy patting himself on the back to actually do his homework. <laughs> At the end of the day, heating oil costs anywhere between two and four times the price of natural gas. It is a particular driver of energy poverty in this country. We have taken steps forward to improve affordability by enabling the, the, the implementation of heat pumps, which will save people up to $2,500 a year, but doing so in the context of a plan to flake climate change, something again that the Leader of the Opposition has said nothing about in the years since he became the Leader of the Opposition. Here. Pretty sure he has. And his plan to fight climate change doesn't involve putting Canadians into poverty. And again, fighting climate change in Canada, we could only reduce our carbon footprint by 1.6%. Meaning we would be a net zero carbon country, which has a net effect on the world carbon emissions of virtually zero. Now take a country like China, who is, you know, most responsible for for polluting the earth. And instead of putting their citizens into poverty, they're bringing their citizens out of poverty. They don't care about the effects on the environment. So ask yourself this, why is the liberal government putting Canadian citizens into poverty to reduce our very minuscule carbon footprint? Right. You should be not worrying about us. You should be making life more affordable for us, celebrating the fact that we're a pretty green country as it is, and focusing your pressure on other countries like the United States and China. That would make a heck of a lot more sense if you're really serious about the environment, but it's obvious they're, they're not. No, it's just virtue signaling. That's it. Yeah, they do what's easy. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Oh badly for that Liberal minister who's been abandoned by his leader, who the leader of their government won't even stand and defend his own decisions. We know that on Thursday, he suddenly, after having his door beat down by terrified Liberals about to lose their seats, decided to flip-flop and bring in a temporary pause on attacks until after the election, dividing Canadians once again into two different classes. If he's so proud of how he's divided people, if he's so proud of how he's forcing Canadians to choose between eat, heating and eating, why won't he have the guts to stand up and say so now? So if you, if you saw Mark Holland, he doesn't look too happy. <laughs> Mark Holland never looks happy. No, I wouldn't be happy being a part of the Liberal. <laughs> <laughs> why would you be? All you're doing is getting hammered everywhere. You have no victories. You have only failures. You have corruption coming out at it's seemingly every seam of the government. And you know you are destined to absolutely lose the election and lose by a landslide. And lose your seat. Right now they're projecting, what, over half of the Liberals to lose their seats? Over half. 
It's insane. Like, like they're projecting the liberals to lose 50% of their seats. That's a seismic shift. That's huge. Because Canadians are fed up. We're tired of being broke, hungry, and cold. And the latest 338 pan, uh, Canada poll projections are showing the Conservatives at 207 seats now. That's, that's a super majority. That's a super majority. Even Nanos has them at 186 or 187. That's Nanos. So even Nanos polls are approaching a super majority. Let I have been The Honourable Minister. I'll tell you who's feeling abandoned by their leader. Conservative Albertans, New Democrat Albertans, Liberal Albertans. You know why, Mr. Speaker? Because Danielle Smith is trying to take Albertans out of the Canada Pension Plan. And what do we have from the leader of the Conservative opposition, Mr. Speaker? Weak sauce and platitudes. The pretender to the throne can stand up here right today and say a full-throated defense of Canada Pension Plan while his 30 Alberta MPs stand in silence. Will he or won't he? I know we will, Mr. Speaker. And Albertans can count on us defending them every single day along with their pensions. The pretender to the throne. Very soon, he's going to be the usurper of that throne. Yeah, yeah. And, Keep that in mind. And Trudeau is going to be the court jester. <laughs> Trudeau already is the court jester. Yeah, he, he, he even dresses like it and looks like it and talks like it. It's... Um, it's funny because uh, if you if it was so funny to hear all of the conservatives just laughing like big belly laughs when they say that the uh, uh, that Albertans have been abandoned by their conservative leader. Excuse me, I'm pretty sure most of the people in Alberta are very happy to have Daniel Smith as their premier. Just saying. Well, and the other thing, and I hate it when they do this in question period, and it's almost exclusively the liberals that do it. They conflate the provincial party with the federal party they have literally nothing to do with each other except in name yep nothing at all like pierre could not force daniel smith to do anything just as daniel smith could not force pierre to do anything it's completely different arenas I, I... the honorable leader of the opposition mr speaker that carbon tax question was for the prime minister on Prime Minister's question period today. And I know that I, I don't have my glasses on, but that guy doesn't look like the Prime Minister, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. You're right, it's so I have a very simple motion. It says that given that the government has announced a temporary three-year pause to the federal carbon tax on home heating oil, the House call on the government to extend that pause to all forms of heating oil, period. Will the Prime Minister have the courage to stand up and indicate whether the vote on this motion will be a free vote for his members? Yeah. Ooh, that's significant. So in Canadian Parliament, and other Westminster-based systems are not typically like this, in Canadian Parliament we have what's called very strong party discipline. That means that if you're part of the Liberal Party, or if you're part of the Conservative Party, or the NDP, whichever, you vote the way the party leader wants you to vote. It doesn't matter what your constituents want, you vote the way your party leader wants you to vote. A free vote is the option to not vote with the party. That's what a free vote means. So you're not receiving a directive from the party leader, or the whip, or anybody else in the party as to how you're going to vote. A free vote is just to allow the MPs to vote as they will without discipline. Yeah, like for example, you all saw a few weeks ago when Liberal Ken McDonald from Newfoundland and Labrador had voted uh, against the Liberals. He almost certainly received some form of discipline for that. And, and what we mean by discipline is it's usually you're doing like the grunt work, the committees that nobody else wants to do, um, or, you know, they can even kick you out of caucus. So that's what we mean that by discipline. The Honourable Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Those of us on this side of the House prefer to do good public policy rather than simply just play politics. I know that is, a, that is an idea that seems to be foreign to the Leader of the Opposition. 
Heating oil is two to four times expensive as natural gas. It is a particularly acute issue for people in a number of provinces, not just in Atlantic Canada. The program that we are putting into place applies across the country. It is to ensure that we are addressing concerns around affordability in a thoughtful way, while also addressing concerns around climate change, which I'm sure their children will tell them is a very important issue. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. For the Prime Minister, his lone Liberal MP in Edmonton was asked, quote, Western Canada, that they're being left out of this whole home heating oil and the exemption for home heat from the carbon price. Should natural gas be added to that? He said, no, I'm not concerned at all. He then went on to say that if Albertans want to have the exemption, they can switch their furnaces over to oil. <laughs> what? Does the Prime Minister agree with his member from Edmonton that Albertans should spend thousands of dollars putting in a more emitting source of energy just to avoid paying the carbon tax? <laughs> What a gong show. Seriously. So, this is a liberal yeah. MP. I'm speechless. Like, this is the dumbest thing I think I've heard today, and question period's not all the way over. Liberal MP. Oh, well, if Canadians want to avoid paying the carbon tax and home heating, switch over to oil. What? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were for climate change uh, plans. Oh my now, goodness. Now you want now you want to encourage Canadians to switch over to a more polluting and more emitting form of home heating in order to avoid paying the carbon tax. That's the exact opposite of what the carbon tax is supposed to be for. We know it doesn't work, but that was the whole idea behind it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your uh, federal government and their plan to fight climate change. This is what you have when you have a drama teacher in charge with a history major as finance minister the problem is is when trudeau is not there pierre has free reign in question period when he is there pierre makes him look like an idiot well justin does that all himself but pierre makes it worse so I don't know what's worse for Trudeau, showing up to question period or not showing up to question period. It's, it's really hard to tell. Well, if our predictions are correct and there's an election forthcoming, Trudeau's not going to be showing up to question period ever again because Pierre is going to be the new prime minister, much to the delight of Canadians everywhere. <laughs>